they could get into. And some of y'all are like, well, I hate the river. I can't stand what you're talking about. Well, that means you haven't been to the river at the right place or with the right person so far. John would be glad to take you. But if you'll turn with me to the book of Acts, we're going to get into the Bible part of this. And I'm going to look in Acts chapter 9 and verse 5 for just a second, and then we're going to go to another part of the Bible and pretty much plant there for most of the rest of the morning. But in Acts chapter 9, verse 5, it says this, And he, and the he is Saul at this time who would become Paul, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, if you know where we're at in, the, in Acts there, you know that this is where <coughs> Paul or Saul is on the road to Damascus. He's fixing to go arrest him some more Christians, and, and he encounters Jesus. And Jesus says, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Now, for those of us that don't know Old English very well, in other words, it's hard for you to fight against what you're really supposed to be doing. It's hard for you to troll into the current on that job to have your river ready. You burn a lot of energy. You work hard, but you're not efficient. You don't get much done. Not, 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 you don't get nothing of value done. Paul worked hard. Saul, he worked hard. He was very zealous. He was very good at what he done. He honestly believed that he was doing the work of God. But what he was really doing was working really hard, burning up a whole lot of energy, and he was accomplishing nothing of that. Kind of like when I try to troll into the, into the current up the river, I promise you, I'm not making good cast, I'm not catching any fish, and all I'm doing is killing the battery on my boat, and it ain't going to be very long at all before I have to go load up because I ain't got no trouble with a battery left the fish anymore. There's nothing left in me to do with that. And I'm done. Saul was doing the same thing and he said, it's hard for you to troll against the current man. And it was. It was real hard. Now, we're going to study, do a little study in opposing the current today. And we're fixing to go, we're going to leave Saul put for a second. And we're going to go talk or go look at, a, at one of our minor prophets over here. A guy by the name of Jonah. I think most of us know Jonah. I think most of us, if we, if they said, what's the number one answer? My wife loves game shows, and there's one on there that says, I call America Says, and they have the top answers. And one of them has only one answer. And if, if we said, tell me something about Jonah, I'll bet you that 99 out of 100 would say he got swallowed by a big old fish. Well, there's a whole lot more to Jonah than just being swallowed by a fish, although that was a big thing, and it was very important. But we're going to look a little bit through Jonah right here as we look about this thing about current and about opposing current and about running with the current and about using something to be steady in the current. And that's what we're going to look at. Now I want to start in Jonah chapter 1 and I'm going to read to you verses 1 through 3 so we can kind of set the baseline here with old Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for that their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, if you know anything about biblical geography, you'll know that Jerusalem's kind of here and I'm going to try to do this backwards. And then you've got Nineveh way inland over in here and then you got the Mediterranean Sea and they believe that Tarshish is way over here on the other end of the Mediterranean Sea around on Spain, what is now Spain. Now that's what's believed. That's, uh, that's commonly held belief. So you see that Jonah was supposed to go this way. Instead, Jonah goes this way. Jonah went against the current. And just as opposite that current as he could go. And not only did he go against the current, he went as hard as he could. So here he is, he turns his trouble motor on high, turns the wrong way, and he is going just as hard as he can go <coughs> up into that current. And let me tell you, this was the beginning of Jonah trolling in the wrong direction. I, I believe, and I'll hit this in a minute, but I do believe had Jonah just went to own the Nineveh, it would have been more like the lazy river ride down there. It would have been a nice slow current. He got on his inner tube and he would have floated all over there without even being. 
it would have been a smooth sail for him to get right here to where he's supposed to be. At. Wouldn't need the trolling boat. God would have took care of him and got him over there. That was what God had for him to do. But instead, he says, I'm going this way. And he goes in the opposite direction and he turns that thing on. And I'm going to tell you, I firmly believe this too. As he went away from where he was supposed to be going, and that current kept getting worse and kept getting worse the farther he got. You know, if you'll follow that river on up, it'll just get more and there and more and there. When you start down there where it goes to the bay at, you swear it's not even moving. You look in that and ain't even that, that ain't moving. But you get way up there toward where it's at, well it ain't this wide and it runs real hard. And that's the same thing going on with old Jonah. As he got farther and farther away from where he was supposed to be, I believe it narrowed down and the current got harder and it was that much more of a fight. And if you read verses, and I'm not going to read all of it, but if you read verses 4 through 11, you see that that's probably the case because that storm got worse and it got bad. And they're having to throw stuff out and they're having to do all this. And you say, yeah, but it must not have been too bad. Old John was asleep downstairs. I believe the Lord they could be asleep downstairs it just... Just to set, set up everything else. But then they come on down there, you know, and, 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 and they tell him to get up. And they're trying to figure out what's going on. Because surely something's wrong. They throw everything out, all of this stuff. And they get him up. And they finally they, they cast lots and lands on Jonah. And it turns out that, that Jonah admits to him. And, you know, what, what he's done, who he is. And all of those things. And even these old, bunch of old rough sailor, roughneck sailors, they know who the God, the Hebrew God is. And they know that he is this powerful. And he is the creator of all things. Even though they worship their little, little G gods. I was discussing there with Brother Gerald this morning. Probably had their little trinkets in their pockets and, and so forth. And all of that stuff. And they are praying to them as hard as they could. It wasn't working. Well, Jonah, they get him up they figured all this out. But, you know, what's it matter? If we go, if we go. What's it matter if we decide we want to burn that motor up on that trolley motor and go against the current? I ain't hurt nobody. That's just on me, right? What does verse 12 say? Verse 12 of chapter 1 of Jonah says, And he said unto them, that's Jonah, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Hmm. So, we, there, there is no doubt when we troll against the current, when I troll against the current in that river, I bring misery on myself. I don't get to enjoy my fishing trip. I don't get to catch the fish I want to catch. I don't get to do any of those things and I kill my bad. So I do bring misery on myself. Who, what's that hurt anybody else? Well, let me tell you what, when I'm fishing or, or I'm, I'm somewhere like that, I'm, I'm going against the current on that, on my, with my trolling motor in my boat, I disrupt other people's fishing. I disrupt other people's boating or canoeing or kayaking or paddleboarding or swimming. Some of us say, well, we don't want them out there anyway. Well, that's a whole other story. But they got every right to be there too. They get to enjoy it. And if I'm being hard-headed and I'm trolling against the current, I'm probably messing up somebody else's time there on the water, right? I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I probably am. Well, what about when I kick against the cripples like old Paul? Or I do like Jonah and I go that way when I'm supposed to go that way. Well, that, if you was just reading there, you realize that it does hurt somebody else. And a lot of people say, well, yeah, they had to endure that storm, but as soon as they throw that old knothead off the boat, everything was fine and dandy and it's all good. They could go to the now, right? Well, no. Let's look at what it done to them right there. First off, they had, it says they had to throw everything out of the ship. Yes. Let me tell you how that works. That means that they had bought the cargo that they put on that ship from somewhere, to take it somewhere else and sell it for more money, more money so they could feed their family. So now we, Jonah's decision to go against the flow has cost them financially. And I don't mean that in a way of being rich. I'm talking about this was their way. Of it. So he had, that's, respect, that's affected them in that way. And if you keep reading, you find out that they didn't want to throw him out. Because it turns out even these old rough neck sailors had a, had a bit of a heart in them and they didn't want to kill a man. So they just worked harder and he brought a lot more work on them 
So they work hard to get make it short, and it don't happen. They can't get there. So now they have to throw you on out like he tells them. So now you put something on the conscience of a man, Jonah has, of these men, that they had to kill him. They took his life from him. So Jonah now, in his I ain't hurt nobody but myself attitude of going against the current has caused people to lose their wealth, their 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 livelihood. He's caused people to have a conscience about possibly taking a life. So it did affect somebody else when he went against the grain. It, it did all of those things. And more importantly, what did it do for his witness? What does it do for my witness when I decide I'm going to go against the curve. Not the river, but I'm going to defy what God has told me to do. What he has for me to do when I defy that, what is it? What have I done? Have I hurt myself? Yes, sir. I have. I have separated that that bond. I'm not close to the Lord right now. I'm not getting that blessing from him. I don't have that relationship with the Lord that I so desperately seek. That one that you when you get there, as, as Brother Bo God said, you don't ever want to lose it. You want, you want to find that again. You want to be there with the Lord. I, when I'm going against the will, against the current, then I, I'm, I'm not able to have that relationship with the Lord. When I go against His will, I can't do His work. And I've got plenty of work to do. So when, when we go against the, the current, not only do we bring misery on ourselves, we bring misery on others around us. It's not that we just affect ourselves. And then we don't just affect them in the sense of what we're doing, but we also take away maybe that glimpse of Jesus that they need. Because if I'm going against the will of the Lord, if I'm going against the current, I'm certainly not being a strong witness for him. My actions are not what he was what, what people need you know to see anymore and that's what suppo I'm supposed to be that witness by my actions but I'm going this current I'm not that witness anymore so I've now me and Jonah have already messed up everybody else around us as well because we decided to go against the troll against that current now what happens when we troll with and not against and when I say we, I'm not talking about running down with the current. I'm talking about we use that current in our trolling motor to advantage. Well, when we start doing that, when we start working that way, things do begin to work a lot better. It's amazing how it works. We, we'll spend more time fishing and less time fighting. And if any of you do, do what I'm talking about, you understand what I'm saying. Because you will fight that current. And you will fight against stones. And, and, and logs and, and whatever else is in the water. It won't be perfect, but it will get better. Now, look in Jonah chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 and then I'm going to read verse 10 in Jonah chapter 2. And it says this, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. So Jonah is in the belly of the well. We've been thrown out of the ship. He's been swallowed by a big old, great big old fish. And I won't, well, we won't fuss and argue about whether it was a, a fish or a whale. It was something that swam in the water. It was big. The Lord put it there and he let it swallow Jonah. So now he's in there and all of a sudden he's got Jonah's attention now. He's got his attention. He, Jonah's paying a little bit more attention. He's deciding, well, maybe my hard headed way, trolling against the current, is not the best action to take right now. Maybe I haven't done so well with it. Why? Because now he's got himself in a really bad place. I mean, a really bad place. And let me tell you, when when you when you when the same with trolling, when I'm doing that trolling, if I'm going up against it, I'm fighting the current and I can't beat you. When I go with the current and I run down the river with the current, well, then I'm going to run into a stump or a log and I'm going to find myself outside of the boat. I almost did that yesterday. Because when you hit it doing 15 versus doing one, it makes a big difference. 
So I may find myself in a bad spot. And when I get in that bad spot, where am I going to start with? Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the dish of death. And you know what? And in verse 10 there it says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So see, we realize, and if you read all those verses in between, verses 2 through 9, you find out that Jonah goes to pray it and repent. And he means it. And he does. He means it. And I promise you, if you found yourself in the belly of a fish, you'd pray and mean it too. It wouldn't be a place you'd want to be. You know, scientists try to say that that can't happen. It's impossible. The digestive acids of a fish, if it was actually large enough to swallow a human being, it would immediately start killing that human being. They couldn't breathe. They couldn't. God can. And that's where Jonah was. I don't remember going to tell you. Jonah is just as real as I am standing here right here today. And that fish was just as real as the ones I caught yesterday and held in my hand. Of course, mine wasn't quite as big as Jonah. But they, this is real. It's not a make-believe. It's not a story. It's not allegory. It's not for you to get an idea from. This is what happened. Jonah found himself in a really bad place. And when he found himself in that bad place, he figured, I better pray. I better repent. Maybe I shouldn't have went against the girl. Did that make it all better? I don't know. Have you ever been bombed out of a fish? I'll say this, I'd have been real happy to be out of the fish. I'm not real sure I'd enjoy being bombed out of that. So, does it make it better? Kind of like that troll. If I told you, if I'm going down here and I hit that log, I promise you, it will just about throw you. It, it will throw you out of the I've been thrown out of the boat before doing that. I know, like I told you, I almost did yesterday. If I'm fighting up, I'm not probably not going to hit it. I'm going to get caught by a log by my boat back there that I forgot to pick up, and I'm just going to sit there in one place. It ain't going to get nowhere. Not going back. But if I'm working, I'm avoiding those. But if I do happen to hit that, and you will sometimes, because guess what? God's not going to take all the problems away. But when I bump it, it's doing about a mile an hour, I barely even notice that I bump it. It's not a big deal. God didn't say he's going to take away those problems. He just said he's going to make them manageable for us. And when we are going with the current, when we are we're using that current to our advantage, and we're using that trolling motor that God gives us, then when those troubles come, they're not going to, when we hit that stuff, it's not going to be quite as sudden and impact. It's not going to be quite so big a deal to us. Our focus is somewhere else. So, Jonah was glad to be out, but I promise you, he wasn't enjoying where he, how he got out. Wasn't enjoying where he was. That wasn't, that wasn't easy. But let's keep on going. Jonah chapter 3, I want to read to you verses 1 through 3a. And that means I'm just going to read the first part of verse 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, how many times do we have to be told twice? Saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Jonah didn't run down and get him a, a boat ticket this time to go the other way. So thankfully, he learned. He learned a valuable lesson there. And God was gracious and allowed him to learn a lesson. So, when we decide to do it the right way, it's a lot more effective. We don't get, we don't have as many issues. We don't encounter those problems as much anymore. And it won't be so bad. Because you know what? Here's the thing. John was not going to do what the Lord told him to do. Now, when he didn't do what the Lord told him to do, we've got all of that reading that's there we skipped over for the most part, explaining the results and what happened because of his disobedience, because of trolling against the current. But if you read right here, so Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. That's all it talks about this trip. I think he finally made it into that inner tube on the lazy river with the easy current because it was pretty uneventful. And what events happened to him during the time he left 
wherever he got spit up on that Mediterranean shore to the time he got to Nineveh, even if it was bad, it must not have had much of an impression. He must not have noticed very much because it's not recording here. See, we can handle the problems that arise a lot better when we're working with the Lord instead of working against the Lord. That's what he'll do for us. But now let me ask you this question. And I do that a lot. I, I, it's a habit on Wednesday nights. We do questions and answers. And people actually answer me. It's pretty awesome. I like that. But, and y'all feel free to answer anytime you want to when I'm up here. But let me, let me ask you. Once we've corrected, are we always correct? Do we learn that lesson and that's what we do and we're good and we never again have any troubles anymore? We learn it. Like Jonah. We learn it, we're good to go. Ain't that right? Shoot, yeah. Let me tell you, didn't y'all just hear me say I almost threw myself out of the boat yesterday? I know better. For years now, I've known, I, I've learned and known how to troll that river and to do it without giving myself any trouble, without tearing up my boat, without throwing myself in the river. And the most efficient way for me to catch the most, to maximize my fishing time. And you know what I've done yesterday? I still decided that there was a section there that I could just go with the current. And I mean, I came back close to going swimming when I hit that stump that I couldn't see. So even though I know, I still didn't do what the Lord had taught me to do. The things that I know to do, I didn't do. I still decided I knew better. I could do it better, and that would be that be it. John chapter 4, verse 1 says this. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. Who was he angry at? He was angry at the Lord. Not you, I promise you. He was angry at the Lord. Why was he angry at the Lord? And this is something that's amazing. This is amazing to me. Jonah goes and preaches to a city of people, a city so big that it says here, it's a three days walk, journey walk, to go across this city. No, that's a humongous city. That's a lot of people. God's fixing to kill all of them because of their sinfulness. Jonah gets a chance to go preach to them, and just about everybody there listens to them. Believe me, that's amazing when you're a preacher and you get people to listen to them. It don't happen all, all the time, I promise you. They listened to him. And not only did they listen, you know this was about, this is the, the largest revival ever recorded on paper. You're talking about a city this large in this city. The king, starting with the king, the, the guy in charge, what we probably call a mayor today, he said, put on your sackcloth and ashes. Yeah. It's time for us to repent. And there was a move in that city because they did. He was so serious about it, he wanted the animals in sat called and ashes. And God stayed. And God said, they have. They, they've repented. I'm not going to destroy them. Now, if you'll go a couple of more books over, you can read the part two about that, but we're not doing that today. As of right now, then it has been saved by the preaching of Jonah who has pushed <coughs> the current all this time comes back and now knowing and seeing what God can do, he gets mad about it. And he decides, once again, I'm going to be hard. I'm going to go against the current once again. So what does he do? He goes and sets him up in a little old place to sit and watch the city on the east side over there. Builds him a little booth to sit there. And he's going to watch God destroy this city. Not going to get destroyed anymore. And so, what's the Lord do? The Lord says, hey, you know what? I'm going to let this vine just go. It's going to grow up. It's going to give you some shade. Y'all don't want to do this for you. Oh, boy. He said, all right. I'm going to sit there watching that day, and it's nice. He's got a nice shade. During the night, a worm comes and eats that vine, and it's dead. The next morning, the son of the Lord lets that old hot east wind, that hot dry wind come flying across there. Ain't nothing to God in your, I bet his old head and neck's burnt. It looks worse than these young who went to the beach yesterday. And he's sitting there, he wants to die. And he, yeah, I get it. It's miserable. And he's mad now because that little vine and his shade is gone. 
Now, this is not exactly part of this sermon, but if you'll finish up there in chapter 4, you find out at the end of it, some people say, that ends weird. No, it ends saying, Job, you, or Jonah, you're more concerned about the life of a vine than you are about all of these people. And he's showing that old hard head just one more time. And he's showing how our actions affect us. When we go against that current, when we travel against the current, we don't just affect ourselves. Did he affect, did Jonah affect himself? Yeah, he got swallowed by a fish. And then he got sunburned real bad. All because of his decision, I'm going to go against the current. So even though he learned, and he learned a powerful lesson, and you say, well, there's no way that I'd mess up again after that. And then he goes and does it, does it right again. Just like we do. Every one of us get to do stuff like that. And, and like I said, that's not really part of this, but I, I, got, I had to put that in there for you. Now, I want to I start wrapping this thing up. Keith. Eventually, <coughs> if, if we, Christians, if, we, if we'll strive to stay in the Spirit, if we will read our Bibles and we will pray and we're serious about that, we'll repent about sin, and, and, and y'all repentance is not a one-time thing. When we sin, we need to repent. We got to do that so we can keep that 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 relationship with the Lord strong. And if we'll strive to be filled, and when I say filled with spirit, I'm not talking about running up and down and hooping and hollering and doing all those things. That's good. If the Lord does that to you. Go do it. I'm talking about that content, that peace that comes that passes all understanding, knowing that you are walking with the Lord. It's a wonderful feeling. It's that feeling that you should want to have all the time. Well, you know what? Eventually, as we mature as Christians, we strive to stay there. We do those things. We look for it. We see the beauty in His creation, and we see Him in all of that stuff. We begin to see God in each grain of wood. We see God in that stained glass over there. What's it say over in, uh, is it in Hebrews, where it says, Man builds the house, but God builds everything. And we start to see that. And we'll begin to walk in the Spirit far more. We'll, we'll troll against the current a lot better. We won't hit so many stumps and snags. And when we do hit them, they won't be such a big deal. I want to read to you. Like I said, I, I was leaving Saul for a little bit, but we're going to go back to Paul for just a grunt here. Here to wrap things up. And look with me in the book of Philippians. And as far as Jonah's concerned, if you've never really done a study on Jonah, I encourage you to do so. It's a wonderful book. It's a little book that's full of a lot of good stuff. And, and you can just go on and on with it. But in Philippians chapter 4, I want to read to you verses 11 through 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, this is Paul, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul had come to a point in his life where he didn't get against the bricks so much. Yes. And I'll say this for old Paul. He was probably fairly hard-headed too. He about had to be to be able to endure some of the things he endured to do some of the things he did, but he's reaching a point here in life where where he's not kicking against the current so much. Where he's not trolling against the current so much. Now, you say, oh, well, he's going against the current. Let me tell you a little bit about that current. You see, the current, if you go just if you just go with the current, that's kind of like you just roll it with your world. So straight against that current, that means I'm fighting against the things of this world. But if I will allow that current to carry me through this life, while I'm guiding with that trolling motor, prayer in this Bible, I'm still going to have problems, but when I hit that stump, when I hit that snag, I'm going to be able to handle that a lot more. It's not going to be near as noticeable. I'm going to be able to be content in whatever state I'm in, whether that be catching all the fish that day or getting skunked that day and not catching anything. It won't make any difference. I'll be all right. I'll be content. And I get there by using that trolling motor that God gives me to navigate the current in this life. I don't have to fight the current, and I don't have to go with the current. I can get through it. And God gives me everything I need to do 
that right there. It don't mean that life just got easy. And that's not going to happen. <laughs> Go ahead and tell you. And I don't think i got to tell him yet. Because every one of us can sit here and ponder all the bad things. I can assure you, I've got plenty of bad things that goes on in my life. I can choose to focus on those, or I can choose to focus on all the blessings that God puts in my life, which far outweigh the bad things. Yeah. And I don't even deserve any of the good things whatsoever. I deserve the bad things. So, as I said, as we mature in Christ and we start to, to stay in that spirit more, we'll start being able to do that more. We'll kick against the crazy little bit less. And by getting to that point, getting to that place, it allowed Paul to sing and praise in a nasty old jail. Yes. What would most of us do in a nasty old jail? Uh, it wouldn't be singing and praising, I promise you that. Yes. But it allowed him. It, 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 he began to sing and praise rather than complain about a dying dying. That's the two, that's the opposites. That's the that's where when I'm I'm using this trolling motor to guide me through the current of this life. If I'm doing that right then I'm going to sing in praise. If I'm, if I'm mad and I'm, if I'm, I'm looking at the bad, if my heart's not in it, if I'm not praying, if I'm not reading my Bible, then I'll complain about a vine dying. John. And that's what that, so where we're at, what dictates our life, what, what gets us to do the things that we should or we shouldn't do is all coming from whether or not we're using our trolling motor and use me correctly. I can beat you with this thing, or I can love you with this thing. Same thing with that trauma. I can work it to my advantage, or I can wear it out. Either one. And eventually, again, we'll get to where Paul gets, knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it don't matter what state I'm in. I'm happy, I'm good, I'm fine. And it also lets you, when you come to the end of this, you can say like Paul did over 2 Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought a good time. I have finished my course and I have kept it. We learn from those lessons and then we learn from where we messed up again. But we always come back to where we should be. And we fight a good fight don't mean that we go headlong into the current and wear ourselves out prematurely. We don't go with the world, just forget it, forsake it all, and run down the river. But we use our guide to navigate us through it. We find a good fight that way. We finish our course, and we're not more slap out. We've got to have that shoulder rebuilt because we stole too much of it. I would encourage us all to troll with the current. Here's your trolling motor. Bro, if, if you know what a trolling motor in a boat is, that's your trolling motor. Make good use of it. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just bless each and every one in here. I thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. I thank you for this building that you let us come and gather up in, Lord. It's, been said earlier today, Father, without fear of persecution. We don't have to worry. We can come here and we can we can sing and praise and we can do those things that you encourage us to do all that we want. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the blessing of you giving us a guide to navigate us through this world. <laughs> Not a guarantee to, to miss all the, the stumps and all the snags and all the bad, but Father, rather to be able to manage those things because you've given us what we need, the tools. You've given us what we need. And it's right here. And I pray that each and every one here use it. Lord, make it real to us that you are, you are only a page away from us. At any time, we can grab up this old Bible and we can get in it, Lord, and we can find you. I ask you, Lord, to lead God and direct us. Father, let us troll along with the current. Let us be a blessing and not a deterrent to those around us. 
Let us show Jesus in our words and our deeds to each and every one we encounter. Be with all those that's been made mention of here today, Lord. Bless and heal. Give peace. Give salvation. Lord, I pray that you would continue to, to move throughout this nation, Father, throughout the world as we hear and we read and we see the videos of, of your movement in, in places like Ashbury and in these other schools and in, in these other countries, Lord, and in cities. And as we see people do more and more to get the name of Jesus out there, Father, I pray that you would you would use that and I pray that you would keep going and I pray that we'd want to go along with that. That'd be what we want to go along with, Father. And I pray that you would just, you would continue to move. I pray that you'd fill this place. Fill each heart, Lord. Let each and every one of us fill your spirit. And Lord, if there'd be anybody in here that's not, not that don't know you as Savior, that's not, don't has not welcomed the Spirit in them, Lord, let them let them be today. Lord, I ask that you would just lead us, you'd guide us, you'd direct us, you keep us safe, and you bring us back here at the next appointed hour. If it's your will to give us that time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see y'all next time.
thank the Lord that we're able to be here today. Amen. Let me give you these announcements real quick. Wednesday night, sir, and youth group starts at 6 o'clock. We encourage you to come be with us. <laughs> On Sunday school, at 10 o'clock, we've got a lot of good teaching. Encourage you to come be a part of that. Of course, our 11 o'clock service here at church. And uh, the Ellis family now will be in concert at Old Mount Zion just a week from today, Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Everyone's invited to attend, so we encourage you to do that. And remember, the clock will spring forward one hour on March the 12th. And that'll be the end of good old standard time, as it says here. So we won't be going back anymore. So y'all remember that. That'll be next Sunday. And that's usually the one where we all battle getting everybody up get them going. Amen. Let's try to do that. We, uh, we want to take our prayer request up the morning prayer. I do want to, this morning, uh, I know for Sister Ann's family that it's a difficult situation, but for uh, those of you that remember uh, Linda Dean, uh, George's, one of his daughters, her husband passed away this morning being children, so let's be really praying for them. For the Lord. It's been a battle. Uh, they actually, Glenda and uh, Brenda's husband both have suffered a lot with uh, health issues for several years. But uh, Benny has been battling, I know, here lately, and uh, it's uh, wore down, I guess, in that place. So let's remember them and pray for them. Hold them up to the Lord. Uh, so we'll take prayer requests and let's go to the prayer, and, and we'll particularly remember them this morning. So we'll again, here in the choir, anybody in the back row. So Ruby Lester, we asked prayer for Wednesday night, so he ended up doing a pacemaker, so she's hoping to get come home tomorrow. Well, she'll go to the safe for Wednesday. Okay. And then Ms. Sarah's also still in the death. So let's remember these two. Pray for me. Pray for her. Allie Harris. Bradshaw with uh, some of you know American baseball and also Judy Bradshaw, that's right. And uh, she's a uh, battling cancer, so let's remember her and pray for her. Let's pray for Ms. Uh, Debbie and uh, her brother. Can you pray for them? Or we pray for the Lord? Yeah, the 14th is what that surgery for. The Wayne Harris, remember the 14th of March, he'll be having surgery the Lord with him. He prayed for that. Andy Duncan will be having surgery tomorrow for him. senior in high school. So let's remember her and pray for her. Okay. Sister Ann, we will pray for Sister Ann's brother. Uh, uh, said it, uh, said he passed away. So let's pray for her. And we're thankful that Sister Ann, she got to come this morning to the ladies. We thank God for that in grace. But remember, Sister Anna, and thank you. For the prayer request. T.L. Yeah, remember, Sue. Amen. T.L. said what he had, he gave to his wife. So we all know that he's a given blessing. So remember, Sue, she's got it. <coughs> Amen. Amen, Jim. Hallelujah. Uh, also, Sister Ann is going to be coming to the room for her sisters. But for Travis and Marisha, I'll make sure that Jim is going to be coming to the room. 
That's an amazing thing. She'll be to South Carolina then, I guess. You're driving again. God bless you, Sister Anne. Let's remember Sister Anne be praying for her. Travel grace with those God go with her. They want to keep track of you, Sister Ann. <laughs> They'll do it, boy. Let me tell you. You better watch them. They're slipping on there. You'll be, <laughs> they'll be watching you. Amen. Other people. Amen, and David. And they told me that Roger had his uh, uh, girl done Friday. And uh, hopefully he said he's doing something better yesterday when he's back. He's really been down with it. So just praise God. He'll bless that. And for David, he's got battles with his shoulder and all. That he's not calling nobody, but he's still praying. So we'll pray God and give him a touch. Amen. Other prayer requests? Bruce? No, I have seven months later. Amen. Carol? Amen. Amen. For those of you who don't know, if you ain't got to talk to Tony, he's doing something better, coming along. Carol said he's a pretty fair patient, so we thank God for that. And uh, amen. But uh, y'all keep remembering him, mate. He's just working with some stuff, trying to continue to hit him with it. So we're hopeful that that will be the case. Uh, other prayer requests? Remember us and our families. Amen, Sister Linda. We'll do it. Others? Sure. Praying for these, and I know that uh, Bernice is praying and lost her brother. Wednesday night she told us about that. Pray for that family. Rejoice in your country. Hey, it is, brother. Amen. Any of us that's been parents or grandparents that's done had that before, we all know how that is. Amen. God bless you, brother. Another prayer request. Anyone else out here? on the prayer list. You know that. Let's also, if you will, pray for one another here at Oak Grove. Keep holding each other up before the Lord. And, and I'll tell you, to just remind us of this, that God help us because there's not anything we can do of ourselves is what He's able to do. But if we'll tarry with Him, if we'll spend time with Him, and we'll continue to Call upon his name. Well, it'll have to be God that sends us the spirit of prayer, the spirit of revival. It'll have to be him. So let's continue to pray for each other. Remember the church as a whole, persecuted Christians that are around the world, let's hold these up before the Lord. Keep praying for them. The 
Lighthouse Ministry, as we already mentioned, Billy and them, also the staff that's there is going to have to be trying to fill in and take care of things. Let's remember and pray for them. Uh, the Highway Shepherd Ministry, the missionaries that we have in the field, our hospitals and our nursing homes, Miss Shirley, Miss Annette, uh, for our nation, for the healing that's needed, our first responders, our jails and our prisons, our military and their families, our governor and his family, all of our local officials, our president and our leaders. Always pray for our youth here and their teachers to remember. And I like what Brother Joe says when I just mentioned this in, in his prayer, that not only are they the church of the bar, they are also the church of the day. They make a difference. Hallelujah. And we thank God for it. And also remember uh, always to pray for Israel. Continue to pray for God's people. Remember Afghanistan and Ukraine, the folks that are there and all the sufferings that's taking place. We need to hold each other before the Lord. Amen. As I said, there's many others on our prayer list. The Lord knows. And on Wednesday night, if you come be with us, we'll try to call all of those out that we have and we'll pray for them. And then we'll go to the Lord in prayer now. Ask God to help us here this morning. And Pray that you'll remember and ask for God's mercy to be upon Shane, his option as he shared the word of God with us this morning. And that we'll sing hallelujah as unto the Lord. We might give him the glory and honor of his word of God. But Gerald, I want to ask you if you will please lead us and let's pray together this morning. Let's really ask God to help us. Our precious Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning. I pray that in the hearts that we might hear from you. Hallelujah. Receptive hearts that we might Hallelujah. hear from you and, and ingest it. Lord, just pray. God, we want to thank you today and pray for these that's been mentioned. Uh, these of the unspoken, uh, these that was called by name. Uh, Lord, these uh, of the prayer list there that my brother said that Wednesday night, we pray for all, we should pray all for all, all the time. Yes. Lord, just many of them, we don't know the name, but we know of them. Yes. And Lord, we ask it in the name of Jesus right now to send a spirit of prayer about this yes. place. Yes. Lord, can we just forget ourselves and think about Jesus. And think about the Lord that yes. today, that we might come here to assemble for a reason, a purpose. Yes. Not just to come to be coming, but to be a, a purpose to serve Him. Serving and obeying in these days and times is what we need. And Lord, we pray for these and we pray for those in the hospital, those in the nursing home, those in the jails and the prison that needs a, a, a touch. Yes. We pray, God, for our missionaries on the mission field this morning. God, that you touch them, that you bless them and minister, provide for them, protect them along their journey, along that message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray right now for Oak Road Missionary Baptist Church. We ask God that you touch each home and each family that's here today. These that may be on the road traveling, or these may be somewhere else, the Lord may be sick. We ask in God that you touch each one. Minister. Pray, the Lord, that you touch our homes, our families, and the problems that we have along the journey. Know that they're but temporary. But one day we'll be headed home. And I pray, God, today that we realize and understand there is a place. Uh, we're just passing through here. And Lord, we won't be long at the very very most. We won't be long. But I pray we're, we've are we got that time of preparation in our heart and mind. And we've already prepared to make heaven our home. And I pray no one thing of God today that that's our forever home. That's where we live forever with you. Oh God, we praise you today. Ask for mercy. Ask for grace and strength and the Holy Ghost of yes, God. So and Lord, we pray again for these young people, our children here. I ask God that you touch them and bless yes, them. So these teachers and ministers that's working with them. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you touch them. Pray for our nation today, God, that yes. we might realize that, Lord, the problem of darkness that's intruded into the light. But we know one thing, if Christ comes in, Lord, that, that, that darkness and that shadow, I have to flee. And we're asking and praying for justice today in our land, Heavenly Father. 
And we pray right now to be with us. Uh, be with Brother Shane. God, to bring the word. God, that you anoint him. Bless him and keep him. Brother Larry, as he labors here with us, uh, we ask God that you touch us and bind us together. Help us to be understand that we're sitting and set in heavenly places uh, and break the bread of life and hear from God in these days and times. Uh, Lord, I thank you for these revivals we're hearing from, some in the third world yes, countries, please. some around and about, some in the United States, yes. some at the colleges. We're asking God that you touch. Yes. Bind us right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> that I got my suit on, but today I had jeans on and it confused her and she stayed put. So. I got it. That song we sang there is an old favorite, sure. I've always loved hearing the song and love to hear it 
son still. And it kind of goes along with, the, with today's sermon. But uh, it's more of how can it be well with my soul, I guess you could say, is how that would that would tie in with what I got today. Well, luckily my oldest daughter's not here because she always gets mad at me when I I would base a sermon off of uh, you know something to do with fishing. Well, it's not necessarily about fishing today, but it does got something to do with boats and water. And I'm just going to tell you <clears throat> the way this kind of started. I've known for, uh, oh, I don't know, at least a week now that I was going to preach today. I don't remember exactly when we dis we discussed it. But but typically, the Lord will start leading me towards something, you know, pretty soon. And, and I'll start slowly kind of working with that and, and, and studying and, and, and putting something together. But y'all... <clears throat> this week, I've just not, I hadn't really felt, I had never just, I never did get something that would point me in a direction. You know, a, a lot of times it'll come out of my morning prayer time and reading time, something that would just come from that, but it didn't, it just wasn't happening this time. It wasn't that my prayer time and my reading time wasn't good, because it's been real good, but it just didn't feel like that's what the Lord was doing. But I'm going to tell you, Friday evening, <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to, you know, what, what am I going to be preaching this week? But I kept going back to, I think I won't you go to the river anymore. Now, for most of you, you're saying, well, that's just because you want to be at the river. And the truth is, is I do. I want to be on that river. And for any of y'all that enjoy this chop hatch river, you know why I want to be there. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful place to be in. It. And it's a, it's a real good place to talk to the Lord a little bit. But I said to myself, I said, well, you ain't got time. You've got too much going on. You quit thinking that way. The devil's trying to distract you. You can take your mind off what you need to be doing. You can't do that. Well, it kept going, I kept on coming back that you need, you know, let's go, go to the river. And finally, before I went to bed, I went over there with Emily, who was already asleep. But I said, hey, you want to go to the river in the morning? And she goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm tired. And that's about all I got out of that. I said, well, maybe I'm, I'm it's just me. I'll I went on to bed. I got up early yesterday morning, and the first thought in my head was, go to the river. Got up, done my morning praying and my reading, and the whole time I was praying and reading, I kept thinking about going to the river. And I just couldn't seem to get just focused. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go to the river. I'm going to quit fighting this. I'm going to run to the river for just a little bit. Well, I go in there and wake him up again, and to, same thing. I wrote, 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 except for this time I didn't make any words out. So I said, now I'm going on. I went, I go to the river. And I fished for a little while. I went to a place that, that, although I've been through there a few times, I've never fished that part of the river. Enjoyed myself, caught a few fish, and done all right bass fishing. And, and it was good. But let me tell you, and it would be later in the day before I figure this out, but I want to I talk to y'all just a little bit about something that, that I've learned fishing that river. And you may know, if you bass fish that river, if you bass fish, you're going to use a trolling motor or something. Now, the chop hatch river flow is pretty hard. And you can sit there and you can burn a battery out or burn your, if, you, if you're really old school, you can burn out an orange skull and trying to go up that river and fish the bank. But then if you turn around and you try to head down that river and work with it, next thing you know, you're doing 15 miles an hour and you're running into everything out there that's in that river. So you still ain't fishing very much. It's going to be difficult. Well, I've learned through the years and, and been doing this for a long time is that I don't need to go with the current because I won't have time to fish. I don't need to try to go up against the current because then my trolling motor is, I, all I want to do is focus on that trolling motor. I want to kill my battery on my trolling motor. And I'm not ever going to stay straight and I'm not going to be accurate with my cast. And if you're a bass fisherman, you know how important it is to be accurate with your cast. So I'm going to waste a lot of effort and I waste a lot of time and I'm not going to get much productive done if I'm doing it that way. So I've learned that what I'll do is I go to the top of where I want to fish at and I face into the current. And I use that towing motor just to easily guide myself in the current. And I work my way down and when I start to get a little bit too fast, I use that towing motor to slow me down. I use that towing motor to maneuver around the stumps and the logs and stuff like that. And if you've been on the chop hatch, you know there's plenty of 
And so I use that trolling motor just to kind of guide me around. So I don't go against the current. And I don't go with the current, but I have something that guides me in the current. Something that helps me do work in the current. And I don't spend as much energy. I don't waste that battery or that skull and notch on. And I don't I don't get in too much of a rush and get overwhelmed with everything that's around me. I become more efficient. I do all that stuff. Now with that said, and I know that took a little